Hello again. And this one, or this micro lecture is on conservation of energy. Uh, three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms, so other products you'll need to complete. So what we're going to look at is this idea of energy. Um, and before we do that, let's review what conservation of momentum meant. Mainly the idea that momentum before is equal to momentum after. And here we're assuming it's a closed system, or in other words, that there are no outside forces acting on it. So if you had a cannonball with zero, a cannon and cannonball, with zero momentum before, then afterwards the total momentum will still be zero. Even though one is moving this way and one is moving the other way, they cancel out in terms of momentum. So that leads us to conservation of energy. Uh, there are kind of two ways that you can think about it. One is conservation of energy means the total amount of energy before is equal to the total amount of energy after in a closed system. So that means that uh, you're not adding energy to whatever it is you're talking about um, from an outside source. Everything that is receiving or uh, giving, transferring energy to something else is being considered and accounted for. So if we have a snowboarder, we might look at just the snowboarder, in which case our system would be the snowboarder um, and his potential energy and kinetic energy, uh, and we might even consider kind of a little bit of thermal energy or things like that too. The other way to think about it is conservation of energy means energy cannot be created or destroyed. Uh, simply what happens is that it gets transferred or transformed from one place to another or from one type of energy to another. Uh, so even in cases where you think energy is kind of coming from nowhere, like in us moving, um, it's coming from our chemical energy stored in our food. From plants, it's actually coming from the sun is where the energy comes from. From cars, it's gasoline. And from uh, a stove, it's from the electrical energy of the stove, assuming it's an electric stove. So two ways to think about it. Um, you've probably heard the idea that energy can't be created or destroyed. That's the principle of conservation of energy. So let's do this, uh, let's look at how to use this in practice a little bit. So practically speaking, um, if there are no outside influences, meaning there are no losses of energy to different places, then we can set the sum of the energy before equal to the sum of the energy after, meaning we add up the total gravitational potential and uh, kinetic energy or any other type of energy we're dealing with beforehand, and that'll equal the total amount of energy after in um, whatever it is we're talking about. Now, there sometimes are cases where we see something happen, such as we start with some potential energy, and the kinetic energy we see at the bottom, maybe of something going down a hill, looks like it's less than the gravitational potential energy. Well, in those cases, chances are that you forgot to uh, account for some type of energy. In this case, it would likely be thermal energy. So an example of this would be somebody starting up at the top of a hill on a bike, and they bike down the hill, and then at the end, they don't have quite as much kinetic energy as they started with in terms of potential energy. And the reason why is because a little bit is lost to friction. Um, and here, friction will turn uh, motion into, or energy into thermal energy, or heat in that sense. And you can feel this simply by like rubbing your hands together, and you can feel that the friction warms them up a little bit. So if there's extra friction, um, then you'll get more uh, thermal energy in the sense, and it'll look like there's a bigger loss in kinetic energy. In reality, it's just that you're not really accounting for the fact that there's thermal energy there. In general, like I said, friction and air resistance and drag and many of those kind of resistive forces that slow us down turn um, any type of energy into thermal energy or heat. So what I want to say, last note, is that oftentimes we'll say energy is lost. And what we actually mean when we say that is that it's been transformed into a less useful form. It didn't actually disappear. It's not actually gone forever or anything along those lines. What actually happened is it's kind of like a penny that fell out of your pocket. It still exists. You just may not be looking in the right place for it, which would be under the couch instead of uh, in your pocket or something along those lines. So in this case, when we say energy is lost in physics, what we actually mean is it just turned into a less useful form that we're not really accounting for, but it still exists somewhere. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.